Hello everyone and welcome back to more Warhammer Underworld and today we're going to see the second showing for the Exiled Dead uh, with one correction from last time that we'll go over when we look at them in detail again but this time they're going up against the Nurgle themed Worm Spat one of my favourite war bands available for the game so without further ado let's just go take a look at the specifics so let's look at the Worm Spat first because they are old, well very old at this point and potentially being replaced soon by a different Nurgle themed warband but it's for the new edition of Underworlds which is awful so we won't be paying any attention to those. Led by Fekla Fly Blown then she's brought along Golgok the Butcher and Septimus the Plague Sworn. They're not super great unfortunately which is a shame because they look so cool uh, but they will inspire if uh, three or more enemies are dead or have wound tokens and they have that chance to reduce damage if they roll shields which usually doesn't happen sadly. And here is the seven miniatures making up the Exiled Dead went much more into detail about how they work last time so please go see that video if you want more specifics but led by Deantelos, his apprentice Markov who has one pet zombie named Regulus and then at the back are the four electrical conductive zombies with pun names that I'm not going to repeat again that all activate at once if Deantelos uses his dance dynamic. Now the mistake made last time was that Deantelos himself actually has the conductive keyword. So if he uses dance dynamic, which is move or attack for everybody with the conductive keyword, he can do it as well. It's not just his four zombies. So that makes him even better than last time. And as a quick note, all the zombies, including Regulus, start inspired if they get brought back by a raise token they lose their Inspire, so they start stronger and get weaker. I think that about covers it, we'll get both sides set up, be back with everything ready to go after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks! And with that we are back with both sides set up. Exile dead to your left and they will be taking first activation and we can take a quick look at where the objective tokens are for your benefit. We have all the expensive ones over here and then one and three for the worm spat over here or rather three and one sorry but right there and they've deployed pretty far forward. The zombie horde has to use every single deployment because they have seven miniatures and with that let's jump into round one of three and see how this plays out. So for the Exile Dead's first activation, it was Deantelos the Exile who activated and he used Dance Dynamics. So you pick either move or attack and everyone with Conductive can do that action. Deantelos himself also moved, just forward one hex. The rest of the zombies basically formed a defensive line, most of them moving up one or two hexes of their potential three. One moved back, again, just to form a defensive line. Markov and his personal zombie do not get to move because they do not have Conductive. In the power step, the Exile Dead played absolutely nothing. However, we'll have to come over here because Fecula did some magic casting, that is kind of her thing, she's a level 2 mage. She used Blades of Putrefaction, if, if cast, which it was, friendly fighters range 1 and range 2 attack actions have plus 1 damage on a crit and it persists until the end of the round, so we'll kind of keep that relevant down there and it's just until the end of the round and it's range 1 and range 2 and remember that Septimus up there actually has range 2 on his attacks, but... Uh, Gogok does not. He's up close and personal, but he does a lot of damage. He rolls three dice looking for hammers, which is pretty decent. Good grief, there was a lot of play and then counter play after Sepsimus's activation. He was first for the Worm Spat, he did a charge onto the Hex you can see, then he attacked at range 2. Obviously things have changed since then, but he attacked at range 2, rolling two dice looking for hammers and absolutely whiffed. So not much to say there, and Blades of Putrefaction doesn't do anything. In the power step, Steady Advance was played by the Worm Spat. And Fecula and Gulglock use, uh, use that to their advantage to each move one hex forwards. And although it's not quite easy to see, if we just come down there, they have moved up together so that they'll be supporting as the camera decides now is the time to go blurry. There we go. That was it for the worm spat in the power step. However, uh, the Exile Dead went a little bit spend crazy on cards. So first of all, Sparking Shuffle was played. You pick two conductive minions and they get pushed two hexes. These two zombies got pushed, two hexes. Then, Dynamic Cage was activated, which is just choose an enemy that's adjacent to two or more friendly conductive minions, and they take one damage. So, Sepsimus has just taken one true damage, which kind of sucks. And then, Scorching Surge was played as well. 
Plus one damage to the first range one attack action made by a friendly conducted minion in the next attack activation. After that attack action, if it was a crit, he takes one self damage. So those two zombies are going to attack Septimus, most likely, using Dan's Dynamic. And the first one to attack is going to get plus one damage. But if it's a crit, they're going to hurt themselves. And they only have two health each. So swings and roundabouts, I guess. Well, it's nice to see luck on both sides is about even because Dance Dynamic was used as the second Exile Dead activation and the two zombies who were adjacent to Sepsimus or moved adjacent to him were selected with the attack action. That's Bolt and Vlash, I think. The one with the stick is Vlash, which is closest to camera here. That's both their attack rolls. They both roll two dice. They're both looking for swords, so not great. They both have overload on these attacks, so if the target of their attacks are staggered, they do more damage. But... Obviously Sepsimus isn't staggered, so not relevant here. First roll got one success through, which Sepsimus blocked successfully. And the second attack was double whiff. So nothing there at all. And then the power phase, nothing played by either side. Second up for the Worms bat was Fecula, who was a bit brave. She did a charge action, moved forward two of her potential three hexes. They're very slow. And instead of actually swapping one of the zombies adjacent to her with her stick, she used her spell attack action, which is Stream of Contagion, I think. Unfortunately, she's looking for the swirls, not the lightning bolts. So that was a swing and a miss. But we're going to have to come back in a second, because in the power phase, Rancid Visitations is being played, so that's going to require another magic roll. Gambit spell needing two lightning bolts, ironically. If cast, each enemy fighter adjacent to the caster is dealt one damage. So that's her attempt to do at least something with her turn. And it may not look like the dice have moved, but I assure you they did, and they did re-roll into double lightning bolts, so that is one damage to each of those zombies. Regulus has three health, the basic conductor zombies have two, so neither of them die or anything like that, but that is them wounded, so that's good progress towards the inspire condition for the worm spat. For the third activation in a row, Dan's dynamic was once again used, attack was selected, so this conductive zombie and the two attacking Sepsimus all did attack actions, all rolling two dice. There's one missing from here which was a failure just so that all the rolls could be shown on camera. It was a, a miss, but that single support is a success because he's helped out by a buddy there and Fecula with their defense roll, so there's one damage. And then up the top end of the table, um, one success here with the single support, one success here with the swords. And Sepsimus blew both of his defense rolls, so that's two more damage. He is one away from death. That is not good. That was some pretty appalling defense rolls. Gulgog the Butcher has had quite enough of these zombies running amok, so he did a charge action to where you can see him and engaged with that zombie there. He rolls three dice looking for hammers. He only got one success, unfortunately. But thankfully for him, the zombie with this defense roll, that is two damage and that is a splatted zombie right there. That was Vlash that goes down for one glory. Now a couple of things happened there. That means that the Inspire condition is met for the Worm's Bat because three enemies are either dead or wounded. There's two other zombies who are wounded and that means they're inspiring. In the power step, Nauseous Revulsion is being played right here. Minus one die to a minimum of one from attack actions made by enemy fighters adjacent to one or more friendly fighters. This persists until the end of the round or until another cycle is played. So that will go next to Blades of Putrefaction, which actually meant that Gogok was dealing three damage there, but he only needed to do two to kill the zombie anyway. Last activation of round one was once again Dan's dynamic in an effort to try and kill Sepsimus more so than anything else, but it was actually this zombie here who got a crit against Fecula. She did roll a success, but can't beat a crit. The successful shield does mean her Nurgle passive kicks in though, so damage received gets reduced by one, so two damage has been reduced down to one. That's still half her health gone though, which isn't great. The zombie at the top of the table whiffed Sepsimus, so he gets to live another day. And as part of Dance Dynamic, after that's all resolved, the move or attack, you can choose an out of play minion and put them adjacent to this uh, Deantelos, at least two hexes from an enemy, or two or more hexes away from an enemy. So there is that zombie returned right here. Uninspires because he has a raise token now as well, and nothing played in the power phase. It just is not Sepsimus's day. Last activation for the Worms Bat was him trying to kill that zombie just to get another glory before the end phase. Two dice, got one success, and it was fully blocked. They, they're looking for shields as well, so unfortunately no damage there. That means at the end of the round, Blades of Putrefaction runs out, as does the cycle, so we'll just go into the end phase and see if anything scores. 
At the end of round one, the XL Dead are scoring nothing in the end phase, although they are setting themselves up for glory in the next phase with Sepsimus almost dead and Fecula half dead. But they didn't score any of their cards. Uh, not a great first hand, I guess. The Wormspat, they scored one for the zombie kill they got in the round, and they're scoring two in the end phase here with a couple of cards. Faithful Reward is the first one for one glory, which is just score as an end phase if each surviving friendly fire is inspired, which they are. They're also scoring Rotbringers, which is what they are. For one, Scorbus in end phase if your warband successfully cast two or more spells in the preceding action phase. Fecula did indeed do that. So as we go into round two, it's 3-0 in the Wormspat's favour, but they're definitely losing in terms of the fight. But they're winning in terms of score, so we'll see how things change in round two. As we begin round two, it is the Wormspat who are taking first activation, so they've got to do something big with their first action, I think. Otherwise, they stand to potentially lose someone instantly. Well, Septimus activated first for the Wormspat, and he went for the Hail Maryest of Hail Mary plays, and he actually did it. He came close to doing like the ridiculously impossible if he had plus one damage from somewhere. Sadly, he didn't. But he did a charge action. He moves three inches on his inspired side, same as on his uninspired. He moved right next to the Lethal Hex and attacked Deantelos at range two with that spear of his. Two dice looking for hammers and he got double crit. Deantelos, to his credit, got a crit as well, but he only rolls one defense die. And he isn't inspired. Actually, does he roll more on his inspired side? Nah, he doesn't. So either way. And that is three damage of his four health. Deantelos is one away from dying. There wasn't anything fancy on that attack, was there? Nope, not, nothing. So... All of a sudden, the zombie overlord is dangerously close to dying, so that's pretty neat. Gives them a pause for thought, if nothing else. In the power step, two unspent glory were spent by the Worms Bat to give Fecula two different upgrades. One is my favourite card in the entire deck, just because of the quote on it. It's Putrid Vomit, which can go on Fecula or Golgok, but it's on the former. And it's an attack that lets you puke, but more importantly, it has that flavour text on it, which is just fantastic. She's also been given Fly Swarm, Swarm, sorry, which is much more relevant. Might actually save our life as well. Minus one die to a minimum of one from attack actions with a range of three or more of the target of this fighter. That's just to try and fight off Deantelos trying to do a cheeky snipe with his spell, basically. Um, although now if he's going to have to run away, that probably won't be as big a pressing concern, but he might be future-proofing. Well, the Exile Dead are just in full panic mode now. Deantelos activated, used Dan's Dynamic, of course, and everybody shuffled around, basically, all the move actions. The Antelos fled down into the corner here. This zombie moved back one. This zombie moved one to the side. This zombie stayed still. And that zombie up there moved. And in the power step is playing Reassert Control. It's the Antelos specific card. You basically choose an uninspired conductive minion. You heal them and re-inspire them. So the zombie that died, which is that one, is back to being on his inspired side. To give him a bit more survivability, potentially. Oh no, the Antelos has just gone down in the most embarrassing way possible. Fate Killer activated second activation for the Worms Bat of round two, did a charge action to where you can see her, and used that putrid vomit upgrade, the blah, 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 that one. Range three, three dice, one damage, looking for swords, and she got two swords. The Antelos just needed to roll a crit to live. He did roll a success, but it wasn't a crit. So one success still got through, meaning he takes one damage and is just melted by Fecula's projectile vomit, which is hilarious and disgusting. It's one glory for the kill and a second glory for Fell the Faithless, which is just for taking out the enemy leader. So they have scored two off of that kill and more importantly taken away the dance dynamic mechanic. That's fun to see. So now the XL dead are in trouble. Well, I guess Prentice Markov is in charge now. He was second to activate for the Exile Dead and used his Puppeteer skill, which means he and his Regulus zombie each get to do one action of whatever they want. So Regulus moved adjacent to Fecula to give support to Markov, just trying to stab at her with his big knife. He would roll two dice, but reduced down to one because of Fly Swarm. Still managed to get a success, which Fecula did not block. Now, it's only one damage, though, so she's still alive on one health remaining. So she's in the same situation as Sepsimus now. Gilgok had to activate for the Worms Bat since the other two had charge actions, and he does as well now. He moved adjacent to this zombie here. This is the lady with the knife. This is Ioni, or Ion, whoever. 
and he rolls three dice on his inspired side looking for hammers. It would have been an appalling roll, but luckily Sepsimus is still alive, so those two singles count because he has a single support. She with her defense roll, and he does two damage. So she is splatted, and without Deantelos, I don't think she's coming back. So that's one glory for the kill, and just because they have so much unspent glory, they're spending one of them on Pestilent Deliverer, which has to be given to Sepsimus, so it's probably not going to do much, since I have no doubt he'll be dying relatively soon, but hey, it gives his charge actions cleave. Uh, Gogok just has cleave standard on his inspired side, which is pretty scary. She would have had to roll a crit to live. Markov got his revenge for his former master on their third activation. He used Puppeteer again, he did an attack action, rolled first, got two successes, Fecula whiffed, Fecula dead. Regulus just did a move to go next to Golgok to engage with him next since he's the next closest target. Now ironically it seems that if Regulus has attacked first just in order of operations and then Markov had decided to move, a card would have scored. Such as it is they only got one glory for the kill but it's being spent on giving Markov Prison of Grief which is a spell reaction he can do if an enemy ends their activation within three hexes he can try and stagger them which in, in turn lets the zombies do more damage to them. So. He can sort of get a synergy there. Last activation of round two already for the Worms Bat. Sepsimus activated, did an attack action into the Conductive Zombie next to him. That is Bolt. And got two successes, which Bolt did not defend against. So that means Bolt is out of there for one more glory. And that is another zombie down. And that means it's over to the Exile Dead for their last activation for the second round. With them only having one glory to the Worms Bat's... Two, four, six, seven. Oh, that's on the nose. Oh, and Markov activated again, using Puppeteer again. He did a movement action to move adjacent to Golgok to give support to Regulus, his pet zombie, who attacked. Didn't need the help, as it turns out. Got two successes. Golgok, though, tanked it like a boss. One success, one crit. He rolls two defense dice. Just absolutely tanked it. No damage. And that takes us to the end phase of round two. So I think it's fair to say that opening hand selection has definitely hurt the Exile dead as they are still scoring nothing so they just have the one glory from killing Fecula. The Worms Bat are scoring two in the end phase thanks to Chosen Warriors which is score as an end phase if there are one or more surviving fighters there's two and three or more enemy fighters are out of action there's three out of action. That bit there is for if you're playing with more players if you're curious so you just ignore that. So that is two glory scored, and that means as we go into the third and final round, the worm spatter up to two, four, six, eight, nine. So nine playing one, even if they get wiped out, I don't think this is going to change the result, but hey, we'll play on and see. As we start the third and final round, the Exiled Dead are taking first activation, so let's see what they can do with it, if anything. Well, making the best of an opportunity to get a double attack in for one activation, Markov activated, used Puppeteer, and both he and Regulus attacked Gogok while he was adjacent to them. And Markov's roll was a complete whiff with rolling two double supports. Regulus rolled two single supports, thanks to Markov being there, those are successes. No successes on either of the defense dice for Gogok, so that's two damage, he is half dead. That was it, though, and in the power step, the XL Dead are playing absolutely nothing. The Worms Bat are playing three different upgrades, uh, sorry, two different upgrades and one additional card. The two upgrades are getting put on Sepsimus as part of a plan. He's being given a virulent blade and solid, stolid, sorry, bulk. He can't be driven back. And you can reroll one attack die in his attack rolls for range one, range two attack actions. Simple as that. Also, Fecund Vigor is being put into play as a cycle card. You can reroll one attack die in friendly fire's attack rolls and this persists until the next attack action made by friendly fire or until the end of the round or until you play another ploy. So just to give the next attack that bit of extra oomph. So with getting rerolls from two different places it was Sepsimus activated, he did a charge action which also meant that Pestilent Deliverer kicks in so he had cleave so it had to be a crit to live in this situation. Two dice looking for hammers, he got his hammers, no rerolls required for that. Whiff of a defense roll at range 2 for the zombie that got brought back. Oh, there's no coming back this time. He gets splatted for one more glory. No cards scored, but Septimus is just trying to protect himself up there now. Uh, it's not going to look good for Golgok since he's going to get attacked twice again most likely. But, let's see. Well, it's not looking good for Golgok, but we're going to do one last roll on camera to see if he can be a boss again. 
So Markov activated, did pop a tier, they're both attacking him. Markov got two successes. That is the defense roll there, crit and the shield, which means he fully blocked it. Regulus, however, has rolled two crits, which means that Gulgog needs to roll two crits to live. So on the off chance the miracle is going to happen, we're going to roll this on camera. And nope. He would reduce the damage by one, which means it comes down. Oh wait, does that mean he lives? Yeah, it's only two damage, and that means the Nurgle passive kicks in, so he only takes one and actually lives, because he doesn't have Grievous or anything on his attacks. Um, no. No, he does not. Although, I did forget to mention a while back Markov inspired, because as soon as Regulus lands a hit... Actually, wasn't that his first hit? That landed properly? I think that was the first one that succeeded, so now is when Markov should have inspired. Either way, that doesn't change what happened here because Markov whiffed. So it would have been two damage. That shield success brings it down by one to a minimum of one. So he did actually live. That's incredible. Well, you will rue the day that you let Gogok the Butcher live. He did a charge action just to move away from Markov to get rid of that support on defense. It wouldn't have made a difference as it turns out. And swung into the regular zombie. Two successes, one of which was a crit. Did have a success, but he has cleave by default. So that just makes that nothing. So two damage. And he already had one from elsewhere, oh, from Fecula back in round one, I think. So that is the three health that Regulus has, so he's dead and that, or undeaded again, or redeaded. Hmm. And that is one more glory, taking them up to a ridiculous two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Oh, it's not all doom and gloom because Gogok ended his activation within three. That Prison of Grief ability given to Markov could be cast as one die because he's a level one mage. Looking for swirls, he got it though. So that means he staggers Gogok, which might help kill him. And more importantly, it means they score a card. They score Strict Tutor for one glory. Score this. Oh, it's in the end phase. Pretend you didn't see that. But hey, it's still, even if he dies now, it's still going to score in the end phase because Markov successfully cast a spell. So that is incredible. Oh, and Gogok just will not die. A frustration boiled over Markov just did a charge action. Probably should have puppeteered to bring Regulus back, but for now has just tried to kill Gulgok. Got one success, and Nurgle has blessed him because he just he just tanked it again. He refuses to die. Well, we're sticking down here. It's not all going the Worms Bats way because Gulgok tried to f hit. Well, it wouldn't have killed him anyway, but swung at Markov to try and kill him, and actually did it on three dice. Did an entire whiff, no successes. He was looking for hammers, so. Second last activation was a bust for them, but I don't think they have much to complain about. The last conductive zombie on the table did a charge to try and finish off Gogok. He rolled two dice. He's looking for swords, so that was a swing and a miss. Single supports would have been fine with Markov there as well, but nope, that was a miss. And that is their game over. There is still one activation left for the Worms Bat. I don't think they need to do much. They've obviously won, but let's see if there's one last point to scrape out somewhere. Just for the potential to, to perhaps score something else, for the last activation of the Worms Bat to take us to the end of the game, they cycled an objective card. Draw one, discard one, and that takes us to the end phase. So, at the end of the game, obviously the Worms Bat have won, because, yeah, we know that the XL Dead are scoring, what was it, Strict Cure, it's an end phase card, but hey, they scored that for one, for Markov casting one or more spells, he did it successfully with Prison of Grief. So... That brought them to two. Had he brought back Regulus instead of trying to kill Gogok, he would have got one on Dread Puppetry, but if he'd killed Gogok, it would have been one anyway, so, you know, it kind of would have worked out. But it's safe to say they they messed up with the initial selection, should have mulliganed. Um, oh, just to go over the Worms, but they're actually scoring two cards in this final end phase for another three points. Blessings three for Septimus having three upgrades on him and Nurgle's garden grows for no enemies being an enemy uh, Sorry, no enemy fighters in home territory and holding one objective. So yes Which is why Septimus moved up onto the objective Which means that the final score for the warm spat as the camera just gives up again is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 Perfect uh, Double seven so Nurgle is very pleased but it was definitely the initial hand that saw problems. Obviously, Septimus almost one-shotting Deantelos and forcing him to run away really ate into the time that would have been spent killing the Wormspat. The round one cards had 
just get a kill with a minion. Thought that would be something that would happen. Didn't. Second turn, they discarded an objective card, drew another one, got one for just doing two attacks in the same action with conductive minions, I think it was, or some something like that. Thought, oh, that's going to happen easily. But then Septimus and Gogok started killing everyone. So there was never two minions, two conductive minions adjacent to a target. So that didn't happen, and that cost them as well. And that just they just sat in their hand and uh, getting Markov a spell to actually cast to be able to get Strict Tutor proved difficult as well because he doesn't have a spell innately. Um, Deantelos does, but he does not. So their initial hand was rough. We saw last time that they can do great things if they get the right cards at the right time. This was a perfect example of the exact opposite happening because the Worm Spat are not a strong warband. They needed updated and they never did and never will at this point probably. Now with where the new edition is going. But they did well. Only one of them died. The other two left had one health each. Gogok probably should have died. He got so lucky with his defense rolls. But even if he had... That still wouldn't have made up for the massive divide between the scores. Anyway, that is going to do it. If you're curious about the series going forward, uh, utterly ignoring the new edition, it looks cheap, tacky and awful and simplistic. This will be the version that will just be played now and then on the channel. It was never popular anyway, but it's probably not going to be as frequently on the channel. As and when I finish off some of the warbands I've still got that I want to try, that'll be a good excuse to bring it back now and then. But, yeah probably not going to be around and certainly not the new edition as much either way thank you for watching those of you that do and did please do remember to show your support and if you can go above and beyond to support the channel as a whole consider becoming a channel member you get early access to certain videos and some other perks it also just helps out you can press the thanks button or you can check out the channel sponsor to pick up something for yourself if you do it via the affiliate link i get compensated thank you either way enjoy the rest of your day see you next time Ta -ta for now